This is the reason why you should buy. And we're not asking the most important question, the reason why, why it was important for them, you know, in their heart of hearts. Like that's a sale. Then we're going to see results, the mindset, you know, going into every opportunity, saying to yourself, I, I would love to have the business, but I don't need the business. When they talk about building their organization just to referral, that means they're missing it. The internet almost shut down because they're like, are you blind? Do you not know what's going on out there? Do you not see what's happening? You just yeah. did 250,000 cold calls. That's Congratulations. Cool. Ah, exciting show today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm your host, Crispin Cruz with the Pipe Podcast. That's right, Pipe. And we talk about sales process, sales initiatives, sales prospecting, and sales experiences. I've got my friend, colleague, uh, Greg Birch on today. Exciting, exciting uh, episode. Greg, thanks so much for joining us today. Really, really great for you to be here. Thank you. Chris, um, thank you for having me. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So, Listen, we're going to jump right into it, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to give you the podium for a second and uh, and just have you take the hot mic right now, Greg, and just, you know, tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about the world that you run and kind of what you do. And if you wouldn't mind just giving a little background and and then we'll jump right in. Yeah, sure. So definitely. So <clears throat> I am a uh, prior army officer, uh, a veteran, served for 11 years in the military, in the army. And um I went to both Iraq and Afghanistan, and in 2017, I decided to get out of the military. And uh, once I got out, I, I I wanted to get into sales because they have a – for junior military officers that are getting out, because I was a captain promotable when I got out, they have a they have headhunter companies that, that you can go through, and, and they do testing to try to connect officers with Fortune 500 companies. And they do a lot of uh, – they, they translate a lot of the verbiage – that of the of the responsibilities of the job positions that you held, et cetera, in order to connect you with higher level executive level leadership positions. Mm -hmm. But they test you ahead of time and I always tested very high in sales. And so uh, I've never really done sales before. Right, <laughs> just, right, right. I tested really high in it. So when I got out, I I ended up getting into uh, insurance by happenstance because I, I went to an Indeed ad that was like sales leading to management. And I was like, I like leadership because I was an officer <laughs> and I'm good at sales because this test told me so. Right, right. So I showed up to this interview and, and it ended up being insurance. And I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? There's people that are making money here. Um, why not give it a try? And yeah. I'm glad I did because I'm still in insurance today. Mm -hmm. And that was in that was in October of 2017 when mm -hmm. I started it, when I got my license. And ever since then, I started as a baby agent and I worked my way up into um, creating my own uh, independent marketing organization or IMO, uh, basically an insurance agency where I connect with multiple insurance carriers and I have brokers across the nation. And that is Delta Financial. There and so, um, you know, I, I learned a lot along the way. I made a lot of mistakes. And, yeah. uh, and I, I, now I coach agents on uh, not only just on sales, but on how to be better people. In order, because I because I really believe sales is very much of a personal development space because mm -hmm. it's all on you, yep. your performance, the money you make. You have to be consistent and disciplined in your schedule as as much as possible, uh, and that's those are the people that are the most successful. So. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, and I just love it. And you know, first of all, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you so you. much. My father was in the army as well, so you know we celebrate him also every day just for you know keeping us safe and made you know taking that pathway um and it, it really means a lot to us so thank you for that so hey i wanted just to ask a little bit because you kind of touched on it you know um and when you got into uh when you got into sales and you started to you know kind of run your own company and do your own you know do the in the insurance side and just start, start to dig in that way how important was it for, you know, you to build specific and good habits, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that you're going to, you know, that you're going to, 
it, it, at least give yourself an opportunity to succeed. Um, it sounds like that was that was uh, you know that was part of the process. It definitely was. Um, I, I I don't know about you, Crispin, but I feel like the salespeople that get into sales initially and they have initial success. I feel like they have the most challenging time because nine mm-hmm. times out of 10, when they have the initial success, they're not doing the steps the right way. It's almost right. like a natural kind of luck or yeah. natural ability that has yeah. them have that success and it never lasts. And that, right. was, that was exactly what happened to me. So when I first got into insurance, the first three to six months, I was crushing it. I was just selling all kinds of stuff. And then, and then it started to go downwards. It started to go, uh, you know, downhill and my my sales started to decrease over time and i and i didn't understand why because i feel like i'm doing the same things i've always done Mm -hmm. but um i eventually about a year later about a year later uh in in november of 2018 i was in a different company uh, as an agent and i had a conversation with this guy and Mm -hmm. uh, the top producer he was he was crushing it and so he was doing 15 20 25 a week consistently. And, uh, and I had a conversation with him and just to kind of pick his brain and see, you know, Hey, what leads are you using? And, you know, how are you getting, you know, clients on the phone and how are you getting employments, et cetera. And he ended up, uh, saying, you know, he gave me some, some help and he said, Hey, you know, you live in, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area and he lives in, in Illinois. And he's like, Hey, you know, you, if next time I'm in Dallas, I go there once a month to go run business. Next time I'm in there, I will, uh, I'll link up with you and we can just, you know, link up and have a, have a, have a drink or something. So he ends up meeting up with me and, uh, in the end of November, it's the, literally the Saturday before Thanksgiving on 2018. And so we ended up going to a bar and having a beer and having a piece of pizza mm-hmm. and, in downtown Dallas. And, uh, he's, I'm like, dude, how was your trip? Like how, how, how much did you sell? You know? And he's like, Oh, I'm at 36,000. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 is that for the month? Like, is that for the month? And he's like, no, that's for my trip. He got there on Thursday. And it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Those sales is 36,000, which is ridiculous. That's oh, even man. ridiculous for agents in a month. And I'm like, dude, for the month, I'm at 3,000. <laughs> you over 10 x my monthly production in three days. And this is my town. Oh, my goodness. What, what are you doing, bro? Like, what right. are you doing? Right. And uh, he was like, well, let me ask you some questions and see if I can help you out, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay. So he, he asked me really basic questions. He asked me, hey, hey, how, how's your lead flow? Are you investing back in the business weekly? Mm-hmm. Are you going to training weekly? Are you controlling your schedule? When you have dial days and you're setting appointments, do you lock yourself in and only do that? What are mm-hmm. your goals, right? And as he's asking me these questions, I'm kind of tap dancing. I'm giving like answers like, oh, you know, I bought leads like two weeks ago, but I want to make money before I buy some more. And, and like, oh yeah, I go to trainings when I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a, um, you know, a topic that I don't know, but I've been in insurance for a year. Like I already know this stuff. And, um, you know, Hey, my goal is really just, I just gotta, I want to be able to just make enough money to survive right now. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, uh, and he was like, hey, do you call on dial days? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of dialing every day at all times just to see when I can catch people. Right. Yeah. And he looks at me and he was like, Greg, hey, man, I know what your problem is. And he, and he like leans forward. It's all dramatic. He leans forward. He looks me in the eye and he's like, dude, you think you're special and you're not. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's perfect. And, and, and it's, it's for, for context sake. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I got an ego, obviously. Like, look, I'm a pretty big dude, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm like, dude, I, I've deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq. I've literally led soldiers in combat. And here's this guy who is a Russian American. He's had his American citizenship for about a year. Mm-hmm. He's only been in insurance for one year. He's looking at me and telling me I'm not special. Like, right. I'm like, who, who does this guy think he is? Right. But he was so right. And he goes through, he starts breaking down all of these different things. You know, says, Hey, you know, Hey, the reason why I'm having the success I'm having is because I'm not special either. And I understand that. So I go to Mm -hmm. every training. I invest in leads every week. I lock down my dial days. I set a minimum of 30 appointments a week because I know my numbers I have. And he was like, here's my goals. And he said, this is my first year in insurance. And he wrote down his goal, which was he wanted to write $400,000 of insurance premium Mm -hmm. first year in the business issue paid. And he had it yeah. on his lock screen and his home screen, his phone. 
Mm. He was like, I see this every time I open up my phone. It reminds me that I got to get to work. Right. Right. That's right. And, and, uh, and I sat there and I just listened to him and I just listened and I was like, you know what? I, I, he's right. Yeah. And it's, it's these, it's these basic fundamentals. It's not the perfect script. Oh my goodness. It's, it's not that, um, I all of a sudden, like I, I got to have this magical sentence that's going <laughs> right. to get people to buy. Yeah. Yeah. It's following disciplined fundamentals that are not optional. If you want to mm -hmm. have success in business and too many people come in and they're like, Oh yeah, yeah. That, that like, that's good and all, but I'm going to do it my way. Like, ah, I don't really operate well off of calendar. Well, then you're <laughs> not going to be a very good sales professional. It's 1099 and right. you're your own boss. You're just wow. not. Wow. It's so good. I mean, Greg, uh, every alarm is going off right now. Um, you know, in my mind, which is scary. <laughs> you know, because no one wants to see that, by the way. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I mean, you are so when we get into training with sales arbiter, we go into companies to help them train their teams, right? And mm -hmm. we'll go through a whole outcome sales training program, which is you know, a custom program built on disc, D I S C, and then also, you know, foundational training um process that we we instill in every single company that we serve, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we do that, you know, and I'm going into organizations and I'm like, okay, let's take a look and see how your, you know, how your sales reps, and I use this word very specifically, how your sales reps are behaving, right? How are they behaving? What are those behaviors look like? And to your point, like what you just talked about, like those foundational processes that you and that's that's it it's the it's more going back to the basics and saying do you have the number you know are you setting a goal for the number of appointments like you had talked about mm -hmm. you know are you setting do you do you have talk time do you have your your time that you're actually going to make calls do you have that designated are you building your, are you buying leads are you building your leads are you doing you know proper follow-up like we we set up a whole system what you're just talking about right now which is the KBIs, key behavioral indicators. And that's how you're supposed to perform either daily or weekly. And then those roll up monthly. And those are just those foundational things that you need to do to build your business. Like that's exactly, you know, what, what we talk about. And you can't imagine how many times we go into organizations and they don't have those basic fundamentals. Like they don't have those and, and they're, they're tap dancing. You know, and here's the here's the funny part: the president, the CEO, the VP of sales, like they're the ones that are tap dancing. They're telling me why they don't have those, you know, um, why they don't have those metrics in place, or why they don't have those tools in place to just be able to peer into the window of sales and say, "Hey, this is how this is how our our company is performing against our goal, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is this is how our company is is is." Um, is, is in most cases not growing <laughs> because those reps are not doing those basic fundamentals that you just talked about. I mean, it's so, so vitally important. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that like in your, in your world and let, let me take you back to, you know, some of the lessons that maybe you had learned in the military. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about basic fundamental concepts, I mean, we're not just talking about, Oh, you make a mistake and then, you know, and then maybe it works out next time. I mean, we're talking about sometimes the difference between life and death. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and especially with life insurance, I can't tell you how many times that I was, uh, it, it's happened uh, numerous times where I would get a lead and I would call somebody and they would be like, oh yeah, I'm busy right now. Uh, call back later. And I would not be diligent and like calling them back. And eventually I'd call back like a month later and then they would be like, and they they would be in tears but like oh well my husband actually passed away he got in a car accident mm -hmm. it's like dude if, if i would have been more diligent they would have had protection in place and that family would be way different off right now mm -hmm. if i had actually been a little bit more persistent with calling my leads with following up with you know following these fundamental traits and and just to get ever, everyone an understanding of how powerful this this is in 2018 before in the year that I had this conversation at the end of the year, I, I wrote a total of about $75,000 worth of premium. That was my first full year of insurance. And I, and I probably deposited about 60, $65,000 hmm. in 2019. I followed exactly what he said. I, I literally, what that night when I got home, 
I mm-hmm. took out two pieces of paper and I was like, 2019, I'm going to write $4,000 in insurance. I put it on my fridge and I put it on the wall beside my bed. I took a picture of one. I put it on my home and lock screen my phone. So I was like, I'm going to see it all the time. In 2019, by following those same fundamentals, I didn't change as a person. I just started following a, a disciplined structure. Mm-hmm. I sold $425,000 worth of insurance and I deposited $360,000. Right. And so I literally completely changed my life just by mm-hmm. following these very basic fundamentals. Right. And so, you know, I would have agents that would reach out to me and they'd be like, dude, what are you doing? And, and they didn't, they never liked my answer because I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I did the same thing you did to me. But let me ask some questions and let me see what you what's going on in your business. And I was like, hey, dude, you're not. You, hey, you think you're special and you're not. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. You're not <laughs> doing this. It. Like, it's not that everyone wants that secret sauce. Everyone wants the cheat code. Everyone wants to know the shortcut. Mm-hmm. They think that there's some magic system that they just apply. It's going to be easy for them. It's not easy. It's it's consistent, boring, disciplined work. Mm. It's monotonous. Oh and the successful people have learned how to master those monotonous things and do it whether they like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're touching on it a little bit here, Greg. Um, but for those organizations, you know, because, or, cause you do some, you do coaching and mentoring, mm-hmm. you know, within organizations as well. Right. I, I mean, that's, that's part of what you do as well. And asking those tough questions, you know, but when you, when you look at, you know, cause it's a, it's tough out there right now. Like there's no doubt, right? They, okay. Right. I mean, uh, and I've, I've had many, many, you know, people on this podcast and colleagues that I talk to daily and it, you know, the business environment out there it is, uh, it's a little tougher right now. So how are you, you know, what would you recommend? Like, what would you say are the three things that business owners or those that are maybe even, even in your vertical you know, what do they need to be doing to be successful and to end 2023 strong mm-hmm. and to start 24, you know, even stronger? What what would you say some of the three basic things that they need to do, you know, with, with themselves or their business, you know, that, that can really have a positive impact? Yeah, that's a great question. I love this. So, um, my, 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 basic law of leadership is you have to master yourself first. You have to lead yourself first. Mm -hmm. And so if they're having challenges within their organization, then you look within. If there's people that are not doing their job, uh, salespeople, 1099, if they're W2, it doesn't matter. If there's people within the organization that aren't doing what they're supposed to do, they need to look within and they need to look at what they're doing and they need to start leading by example. So the best thing they can do and the most important thing to do is to start operating at the highest potential level and continue to push themselves Mm -hmm. to raise the level. So like people, for instance, um, let's say that they're, they rate themselves. If they're, if they were to honestly rate themselves, they were a seven out of 10. Mm -hmm. Well, that means that everyone on their team is going to operate about a, about a five out of 10 Mm -hmm. at at the highest. So if they want to, if they want their people to increase, they have to increase their potential and their performance Mm -hmm. and they need to jump up to a nine out of 10 to get their people to a seven, or they need to jump up to a 10 out of 10 and get get their people to an eight. And so that's probably the the first thing that I was always say is look at, look within yourself and really, and this can be something as simple as, um, you know, reading daily. I'm a big proponent of reading every single day. I'm a big proponent of, of, uh, doing some kind of training, like doing, I do, I listen to podcasts. I just got out of the gym. I listen to a podcast while I'm in the gym. <laughs> I listen to audiobooks while I'm in the gym. Like I'm always trying to feed my mind with content and order right. to help myself. I don't listen to music. Uh, I mean, I very rarely do mm-hmm. because it doesn't pay me in any way. I can't use that in order to better myself. So, mm-hmm. and then exercise. Exercise is keenly important. A lot of people don't like to do exercise. They don't, they don't think it's important, but it transcends to every other area of your life. So I'm really big about doing fitness coaching in order to help people excel in other areas of life. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the, the next thing, that I would say is during these times, there's always going to be difficult times. There's always going to be challenging times in any market that you're in. Okay. Right. Yes. We're in a downtime right now. This is not, this is not the time for you to get scared and to button the hatches and wait and wait it out because there's other people that are capitalizing on this time frame. And so if good. you wait and you batten down the hatches and you don't start acting, they're going to be way far ahead and they're going to get so much more market share. That's right. So you have to be out there and you got to be willing to take the risk because if you can operate and find success 
and a downtime, you are going to dominate whenever times get good. <laughs> That's right. That's and then you're going to be used to when when t- things go when things go negative again, which it always does. Right. There's always going to be ups and downs in the market. So mm-hmm. when then we have another downtime, guess what happens? You are already adjusted to it. You already have thrived in that type of environment. So when everyone you look around, people start batting down the hatchet. This is like this is the time when I get to really make some ground, right? right. This right. is the time where my business is going to suit like really make some changes, succeed, so that whenever we're on the upswing again. I'm going to just take off sprinting. Yep. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to take this time to, 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 uh, pull out of the race. If that's if, right. If you were, and then, and then last is always never feel that your, your systems that you that are, that you have in place mm-hmm. are perfect. You can always go back and look at your system. So like when it comes to a business being successful, it's, it's going to be, you know, your product people, and processes. That's it. Mm-hmm. So the products you have, whatever you're selling, service, item, doesn't matter. It has to be undeniably great. It has to be the best it can be, right? Mm-hmm. And then once you have that, then you have your people. And your people have to believe in the vision, the mission of the company, the core value that they live by. And if you're not living by it, they won't live by it. You have yeah. to openly live by it. And you have to lead by it. You have to hire and fire by it. You have to be willing to let people go. Hey, they may be a top producer, but if they are not living by the core values, they're a hindrance to your overall organization and everyone else's performance. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a term that's called um, uh, addition through subtraction. Sometimes you have to remove somebody, in, even if they're a good producer, you're going to have to remove them from your company because they don't live or believe in the core values that you and the company stand for. Mm. And, and then last is the processes, which is your systems. And that's how companies scale. You have to look at the systems because a lot of times I've, so, I've talked to so many business owners where they're like, oh yeah, my, my business is great. It's, it's automated, scalable. But if I were to take one person out, everything would, everything would fall. A truly scalable strategy and system Mm-hmm. Is that if I take them out, anyone can jump in and get it and still do the job. Right. And right. It's, and then it's because then it's scalable. So like actually having SOPs in place of like how every single position is done. So that if, if, you know, my VP of operations, if he gets sick or if he has to leave for a period of time, I can put another person in there. They can look at this and say, okay, I know exactly what he does on a daily basis. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and they can operate at like an eighty percent of his level right away. Mm. So, so good. those are the three things I would say to look at right now. It's so good. It's so good. Thanks for sharing that, Greg. Yeah, and I, I know that the, I know the viewers and the listening audience they're getting a lot out of what we're talking about today, which is awesome. Um, so let's shift gears for a second. Hey, life hasn't always been, you know, um, peaches and cream for you, right? <laughs> and you're pretty open about some of the challenges that you've gone through. And, you know, and that little, you know, even that picture behind you, you know, the cat seeing the lion in the yeah. Reflection, <laughs> yeah. right? I love it. I love it. And, and so let's talk about that. I mean, what were some turning points for you, you know, not only in your career, but maybe in your life where you... Yeah where you've really had to work on the mindset where you've had to really, you know, you've really had to be reflective and say, Hey, you know, something's got to change here or, you know, or, or the worst could potentially happen. You know, what does that look like? So, um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this as, as, you know, streamlined as possible. Cause it's a long story, but, um, I had, when I was in the military, I was married. And uh, I've got four kids together uh, and we, we had four kids together. And so um, when I was in my first deployment in Iraq, um, she had cheated on me mm-hmm. and I found out about it and we just kind of brushed it under the rug. I just, you know, at first I was like, cause she was very upset. She didn't like the, uh, there was a lot of factors that were in play there. Sure. We'd never had that long of a separation. I'd never been in a deployment before we'd been married. It was our second kid had just been born and uh, you know, she was very depressed and then she didn't want me to be in the military more. And I was like, Nope, I'm staying. And so she kind of took this whole, like, Hey, I, I don't want to be any together anymore. You know, I don't want to be with you anymore. And I don't, I don't think I love you anymore. And this is why I'm deployed. And then she ended up cheating on me. And so when I found out, I was just like, okay, fine. You know what? Let's get a divorce when I get back. And when I did that, the pendulum swung the other way and she's like, no, let's work on it. But we never addressed what actually happened. Right. And so 
when I got back, we ended up just kind of sweeping on the rug. We stayed together, had another kid. And then, uh, we left that location. We went to, uh, from, it was in Fort Hood, Texas. And then we went to, uh, Fort Huachuca, Arizona for training. And then from there, we went to Fort Carson, Colorado, where I was at fourth ID. And that's, I deployed to Afghanistan or yeah, I deployed to Afghanistan there in 2012 and, uh, had a great deployment. Our communication was much better. We didn't have any issues. Come back. Um, you know, I got, when I came back, I went back to Fort Chuka, I took command and I was in, I was in, I was in company command and she, mm. um, she had, I had to go home back home to Clarksville, Tennessee, where I'm from, because I had a buddy of mine that I grew up with that passed away in his sleep. Mm. And so I had to go to the funeral. So she bought the ticket and she had put it on her, under her uh, email address. And so I was, I literally was like two days later, I was in the airport. I was trying to find the ticket to get the mm the record locator number so i could like log, log in right as i'm scrolling through her email i saw an email from this guy I saw mm. his name, and i was like and i realized and i started scrolling kept looking up he had been in contact with her this whole time and, mm. I was, and, and uh even especially when i was in afghanistan mm. and i just i couldn't take it i was like yeah. i lost it and so mm. um when i got back i i ended up cheating on her mm. and um uh, and then i felt guilty about it and I, and I told her about it and I said, you know, we, we tried to go through the counseling and therapy and didn't really work. And so we decided, uh, actually I decided, I said, I think it's best if we separate, right? I think we're just both we're, like the trust is gone. We're always going to be wondering if every time I deploy, I'm going to be wondering, are you with somebody? And every time I'm with a new unit, you're wondering, is there any females there that you, that, you know, that are attractive mm -hmm. that you might like? And so we ended up getting a divorce. And that was probably the lowest. That was what that was, that was the start of decline for me. That was like when I started to get really depressed because I'm, right. I'm used to having all my kids here and at the house with me, and yeah. And all of a sudden now the house is empty. You know, that was when the depression started to sink in and right. um, loneliness. And so I, I sought companionship and love mm -hmm. from external sources, from people. Right. From, so I jumped from relationship to relationship, and I was never from the time I got divorced in 2015. Mm -hmm. until about 2020 till the end of 2020 i was never single longer than two days two three days wow because i just couldn't deal with it like i would and i would latch as soon as i found somebody i would like latch to them and it was like we were together for a minimum of like eight months sometimes up to like two years right mm -hmm. and all these varying different times frames of the, 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 the one two three four main relationships i was in from mm -hmm. the time 2015 to 2020 and so um in 2018, I had the first time when I realized that I needed, I needed help was, mm -hmm. um, I got into the, the woman I was dating at the time. We got into a big argument mm -hmm. and over something that was ridiculous. It had it sure. shouldn't even been, been an argument. And, um, it got so bad that she, she turned to the, I'm leaving you. I'm done. I hate you. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and those feelings of loneliness started to sink in and creep in. And I spent the day, she like locked the door to her bedroom and I spent the day drinking from like 10 AM to 5 PM mm -hmm. and just spiraling in my mind, going out of, mm -hmm. going out of control. And, um, I, I eventually stopped cause I was like, I got to go to work. You know, I was an insurance. So this is what I was terrible. It was in 2018 when I was, wasn't good. <laughs> right. so I go upstairs, I'm like, go to get ready for this appointment. And she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I gotta go to work. And she's like, you've been drinking. You're, you're drunk. And I was like, I'm fine. I'll be fine. And she's like, well, let me take you. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't love me. You leave me. And I'm <laughs> being obstinate. And, mm -hmm. and, and she's trying to console me, but I get, and I take this time to be like, Hey, look, like, this is how I feel. And I was trying to explain to her, like the, the way that my mind is working and how I'm spiraling out of control. And like, I literally, I had these feelings, like I didn't even want to be there like on planet earth. I didn't even want to be alive. Okay. And I'm trying to explain this to her, like how mm -hmm. I feel. And she looks at me. And she's like, well, why don't you go F and slit your wrist then? No. So, yeah, I swear to you. Oh my goodness. And that was the that was like a moment in time when I was like, no one loves me. That's the sign. And so I very calmly walked over and I grabbed my pistol out of the closet. It was on a lock box. I started unlocking it and she's freaking out. And she's like, What are you doing? And I was like, not even paying attention to her, unlocking it, pulling it out, lo like loading it. She calls 911. She runs out of the room. Long story short, cops come, they come in force. It's like 10 SWAT cars almost as wasn't SWAT, but it was a lot. <laughs> they're out, they're out there like on a bullhorn, like Greg, oh, no, with your hands up. Like it was insanity. Uh, and I called a buddy of mine. I was like, dude, this is it. This is, I can't do this anymore. Like, I'm so unhappy. And, mm. uh, and he was like, Well, have you done anything yet? I was like, What do you mean? He's like, 
did you fire the weapon? No. Did you hit anybody? No. Did you hurt it? Did you hurt yourself or anyone else? No. He's like, dude, it's not over. Go talk to the cops. Stop being, stop being silly. Right. And so I was like, all right. So I, you know, I went outside. As soon as I went outside to go talk to the cops, like I unloaded the weapon one side. I just broke down, man. I like every emotion hit me like a wall. And I just started crying profusely, mm. like just not coming out. Like I couldn't mm. see. And uh, the cop was asking me questions. He could see, you can't tell, but above that mindset poster behind me, there's mm -hmm. a there's a huge flag that's my guide on colors that were from when I was in command. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it used to hang in my living room above my TV. And when I walked outside, I left the door open. I didn't close it. Like, and he could see from his angle straight in. He could see that that those big colors. And he looked at me. He's like, "Are you? Did you serve?" And I was just crying. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Did you deploy to, to? Did you deploy?" And I was like, "Yeah." He was like. Do you seek treatment with the VA? Mm. No. Mm. And he was like, dude, you need to. You brought yeah. some stuff back with you. Like you need to. Mm. And um, and that's when I started my personal development journey. So I started mm. going to VA, started going to therapy. I realized I had a problem. Yeah. I got on medication. And I and what this did was it taught me my triggers so I could exit out of situations really quickly if I felt myself getting anxious because I didn't have yeah. much room because I was always this high stress, you know, being, yeah. an, being an entrepreneur, high stress, being sure. Boy, high stress. Sure. So I'm constantly, man, that was when I was a baby. That was when I was skinny. <laughs> yeah. um, I was constantly at a at a like just a 80% stress level all the time. I wake up, I'm like 80% stress. Now the good thing about that is that a lot of things don't stress me out. The bad thing is that the things that do stress me out, I have very little room before I like, I, it, it, my cup is overflowing. And yeah. when it does, that's when I'm like, like I start to spiral mentally and I, mm. I become reclusive. I, I draw away from people. And so I just, I realized my signs and I started mm -hmm. this when I was getting anxious, I was like, Nope, I'm going to step out stage. Right. I'm going to go over here. Cause I can't be around this. Right. So, um, it wasn't until 2020 cause I kept doing this whole relationship thing. It wasn't until mm -hmm. 2020 when I had another relationship and pretty t spectacularly bad. Um, but it was more on their side than mine that I realized I kind of looked at myself and I was like, cause my buddy was like, dude, you keep finding these crazy girls. <laughs> and I was like, maybe mm -hmm. I'm the problem. Right. Right. Like maybe it's me. And mm -hmm. so I decided for the first time in my adult life, I hadn't been single longer than three days since I had met my wife and we were dating when I was like 19 years old. Oh my goodness. So now I'm in my thirties, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like 36 mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be single for as long as it takes. And I spent, wow. and I spent that time really like getting my life in order. And I looked back at the time in the military yeah, and 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 I was always I was always fascinated with the military and how the military mm -hmm. can take anybody from any walk of life across the nation. Doesn't matter, uh, you know what what their race is. It doesn't matter their socioeconomic status. It doesn't matter their weight. Doesn't matter their gender. But they can take them. They can bring them to a single location. They can control all the variables, and they can turn them into warriors on the battlefield. Unbelievable. Yeah, and it's by certain things they have. They have, they control when they sleep, when they wake up, they control when they, how they clean. They're very disciplined about it. They control what they eat. They take away alcohol. They make them read. They make them do physical fitness daily. Mm -hmm. And it's, they control all these variables. And then they have an external accountability source, i.e. drill sergeants forcing it. Yep. So you don't have an option. Right. And what it does is that, that, that discipline over time stacks and compounds to where mm -hmm. it really changes the person you are. Yep. What I found is that I, I did a similar thing. It's like, so I'm, I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to get rid of alcohol. I'm going to drink so much water. I'm going to read read a professional book every day. It's when I started reading. That's when I yep. really focused on reading. And I've been an avid reader ever since. And I'm going to and I'm gonna have a nutritious you know, diet. I'm going to take away. I'm going to get out of these processed foods and, and this binge eating. Because I was like gaining weight and I was getting fat. I was yeah. very happy with myself. Yeah. And... I forced myself to do it by having external accountability with my community. Mm. So I would just post about it and said, Hey, I'm going to make this transformation. And I talked about it every day. It's like, I'm going to talk about it every single day. And if I miss a day, that's because I didn't do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I couldn't lie about it. And what happened was just transformational. It completely um, changed my life. That's I mean, amazing. 
and in every sense, like it wasn't just a physical transformation. It was a mental, it was a spiritual alignment. Mm. I got better at sales. I started crushing records. I literally broke records and I sold $225,000 in one month. Oh, man. And, and like the most I'd done in a month previous to this was like 60,000. And the most that anyone mm. else had done previous to this in the company was like 110,000. So mm. I literally doubled the record and smashed it. And it was, and everyone was coming to me like, dude, what are you doing? And I was like, there was again, looking for the cheat code. And it was like, it's not that I have some extraordinary sales ability. It's that I've become a more extraordinary person wow. that just happens to do sales. Wow. So my conversations were more genuine. My conversations, they, people could tell, I guess I just, I had a higher energy. Right. You know, I was, I was operating, I was operating off of a, a higher vibration. Yep. People could tell it, you know, subconsciously people could tell like, this is a good person I trust kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I actually denied more sales than I, d during that time frame Cause I was just operating at such a high level. Mm -hmm. I, I would meet people and I was like, Hey, I, I don't think the plans I have for you are the best plans for you. And here's why boom, boom, boom. And I know you can get this somewhere else at this price. And yeah. what I found was when I did that kind of stuff, I was that honest. They still either a, they still went with me or right. B, they would send their family or friends, their acquaintances mm -hmm. to me because they knew I was not going to lie to them. I would tell the truth. That's right. That's and right. And it changed everything for me. And so yep. I had this, I had this, uh, this moment where I was like realizing that in my life, I had just been so focused on work and I wasn't really living other parts of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I started to just say, yes, I don't know if you've ever read the book, the surrender experiment by Michael mm -hmm. Singer. Mm -hmm. It's such a great book. It's yeah. like, it's like if, if anyone's ever seen the movie, yes, man, it's like a real life. Yes, man. It's what it right. is basically. Right. And so I started saying yes to all these things. So my buddy was like, well, why don't you go back to church? I was like, yes. And he was like, well, why don't you start, <laughs> why don't you start uh, tithing? Yes. I never tithed in my adult life. Mm -hmm. right. And I was like, yes. And I started tithing. And then he was like, well, hey, why don't you pick up a hobby? And I ended up doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and just paid for it right then started doing it. Wow. And uh, he was like, hey, why don't you start a podcast? Because people right. start asking me about how I'm successful. And I was having these same conversations over and over again. He was like, why don't you start a podcast and just start recording about what you're doing? And I was like, yes, yes. that's how I got into podcasting. <laughs> awesome. and like, here we are. It's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, I'm in church this one day mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there and um, I, I would usually repent during the time they give out sacrament. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just like, like, I'm sorry I did this this week. I'm sorry I did that. Like very, very vanilla, very basic. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there one day, this is like maybe four weeks into going to church again. And I'm probably like, I'm like 45 to 50 days into like consistently following this structure that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I like, and as, as I'm doing it, I'm getting more and more in alignment with myself right? and more things. It's almost like having the ability to read the matrix all of a sudden. And I realized yeah. that like all these things were within my control and like the things that were not going well in my life were because of the actions I was doing. I start to see things in a different light. Right. And so I'm in, I'm in church this one day and I'm, I'm repenting and this voice comes in. It's like, as I'm going to end my prayer, it's like, you're not done repenting. You're not done saying sorry. Right. Hmm. And it stops me in my tracks enough that I start to think, and I'm like, what was that? And I start to think the first thing that pops in my relationship was the relationship that had ended in 2020. Hmm. And I was still hung up on that a little bit. Yeah. And there were some things that she had did that I was really upset about. And I really like missed her too. And I looked, I re-looked at the relationship and everything that happened. And I took out everything she did. And I just looked at what I did individually by itself without any, uh, well, this was because she did this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. When I looked at it from that lens, I realized there was a lot of things I did that were not right. Hmm. Regardless of like who did first, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two wrongs don't make a right. So I started to repent for those things. And I felt like this weight lift off of me and mm -hmm. I let it go. And I just didn't even think about her anymore. I just mm -hmm. didn't care. <clears throat> and so I, I then started working backwards because then it was just like, you got more to, you got more to repent for. And I started working right. like every single relationship all the way through to, the, to my marriage. Mm -hmm. And I looked back at that and I looked at that and I was like, man, I was, I was a terrible husband a terrible role model model and a terrible father for mm -hmm. cheating on her. It doesn't matter if she cheated on me first. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't matter how hurt I was. There were so many different things I could have done. Right. Right. It was not okay. <clears throat> wow. and, and I, and I repented for that. And I, and 
when I left church that day, I felt like a new man. I like it changed my life because yeah. I just took accountability for it. And it was difficult. I was actually like weeping in church as I was praying. I felt like I was repenting for like 25, 30 minutes, like the entirety of the rest of church. But I felt so much lighter because I realized right. I was holding on to all this and I was going from relationship to relationship and I was bringing this stuff with me. Yeah. We had all this, all this angst and anger and, and also a lot of, a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. Yeah. Right. And when I was right. able to let go of that stuff, I was able to elevate myself as a person and it didn't just impact my physical self. It impacted my professional self. Mm -hmm. I, that's, this is how I even, this is how Delta financial even came to be. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have not been able to start Delta Financial if I had not got the following of agents that wanted me to start something different and do something different mm -hmm. because they they saw the journey that I went on. Yeah. They knew me all this time. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't be having coaching or doing Delta Fit if I had not gone through this process. Right. And so right. It, just, it improved every area of my life in such a magical way. And so now my my overall goal in life is I want to make sure that I can help people to go through the same transformation that yep. I did. It's, it's incredible. It's an incredible story. And, um, you know, and, and now I know why, or at least parts of why Greg, you've been so successful is because it's hard to be to first to be as transparent as you are. And I think, I think, um, that piece of of if you want to call it honesty integrity you know or just transparency is being is lost in some cases in the business world and also gets lost in the craft that we've decided to kind of follow which is that the craft of sales yeah. you know and and so and then just being able to share your story and the the bravery that you have to be able to look and and just take accountability for the things that you've done in the past and then apply those in a way that have truly changed the person who you are today in comparison to who the person that you were and you know and then i would say the last part you know which is really incredible is another you know lesson that you try to teach whenever you're mentoring or coaching or help helping others or even yourself, you know, um, grow, which is, and which sounds something like, you know, when, when you're, when you're actually working the position, when you're actually doing the work, the physical work that it takes to be successful and you're, you're doing all of these things, you know, you're coming to the realization that, you know, maybe I hadn't been doing things right in the past, mm -hmm. um, how that impacts not only your personal life, but your professional life as well. Like, you know, the tools that you use daily to help grow your business are also the tools that you should be using daily to grow, you know, your inner self. And yeah. that is, then that is all about, you know, the six inches between your ears. Like, it's just too good. And, and so, you know, this is the time that we thank you so much for sharing that. This is the time that we typically pivot to the sales arbiter seven, if you're okay. Yeah. And I'm just going to ask you some quick questions. And, you know, this has uh, resonated with a lot of our, our guests um, and, and those that watch the show and, and listen um, because they get to have the opportunity to get to know you in a little different way. And mm -hmm. we try and make it fun as well. So, um, so we're just going to jump right into those, Greg, if you're okay with that. Yeah. All right, let's go. So what is your favorite word? Greg, what's your favorite word? Oh, the first one that came to my to my mind was courage. Courage. Yeah. Yep. Courage. I love it. I love it. And there's lots of reasons for that. Yeah. There's lots of reasons for that, I'm sure. What's your least favorite word? My least favorite word, you know, it used to be failure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, I was so keenly aware, or like afraid of like failing all the time, mm -hmm. but ever since I've become an entrepreneur, I, I embrace failure because that's how, how we learn. It's how we grow. Like it sets us up for what's to come sure. as you push through it. Sure. Um, so I, I, instead I see failure now as quitting. So, mm -hmm. so quitting would be my least favorite word. There we go. There we go. I love it. So what's something that could make your day, Greg? Oh man. Uh, honestly, just having a conversation with any one of my kids. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. Anytime they like reach out to me, like right now they are actually here with in my, so I live in, I live in Texas. They live in Florida with their mom during the school year. They're here mm-hmm. for the summer and they just got here for the, for the summer yesterday. Oh, so great. they're here with me and like, just being able to like have a conversation that it makes my day. That's right. It's father's day every day when your kids yeah, right. are there with you. I'm sure that's true. That's exactly. right. What's something that could ruin your day? Ooh. Um, Honestly, that's a that's a really tough one. It, it, it used to be any anything externally would be it would like would ruin my day. Like if it, the things didn't go my way, obstacles, challenges, my path. Um, yeah. Ever since I started this journey, like I make sure that no, there's nothing that's going to stop me from doing my my tasks that keep me disciplined. And those are mm-hmm. physical fitness every day, reading every single day, yeah. um, staying on a nutritious diet, staying away from alcohol. Like there's nothing that's going to happen in the external world that's going to be like, well, today is such a tough day. And like, I need, I need to have some McDonald's or I need to go have a drink like I used <laughs> to. And so right. I, 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 honestly, I'm the only person that will get in my way. If, if And don't get me wrong. I want to do those things sometimes. I think it. Right, sure. Oh, and I would really like a drink. I'd really love to have a whiskey right now. Yeah. But I can't, I like, I don't let myself fall into that or fall victim to that. Great. So um, I guess I'm the only person that could make myself have that terrible time and the Mom, terrible days. And so I'm we, constantly fighting against it. That's great. That's a, that's great. That's a great answer. What sound or noise do you love? Um, there's a little, there's a little chirp. That's on the, that's, that's a notification. It's not yeah. like a bird tweet, like, tweet. that's, it's <laughs> hard to do, but it's on my phone and it is, um, it is a, uh, notification for somebody that's very special to me. So every single time I hear it now, it makes me think of them. Ah, oh, that's great. That is great. Oh. What's a sound or noise that you hate? Right. Anything that's loud and sunned because it literally makes my heart jump it's loud, like a loud bang. Yeah. Uh, if it's, if I don't, if I don't feel or hear it coming and it, mm-hmm. I hear a loud bang, like it literally will stop my heart. Yeah. I almost want to get down on the ground. Oh my <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be. Right. Sometimes it would like literally like throw me into a panic. Um, it's not as bad as it used to be since I've been on the military for a while, but mm-hmm. most military people will knows, know what I'm talking about just from mortar rounds and constantly being right. shot at. So, mm. Gosh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Um, so last one, what profession other than your own would you have liked to attempt? Um, you know, I, I, I would have loved to own a gym. I wanted to own a gym for the longest time when I first got right. into fitness and I, I'm not saying I never will. I may eventually, yeah. um, but I wanted to own and operate my own gym. Cause that's, there's nothing cooler. This be like, dude, I own a gym. I'm at the gym all day. I'm like helping right. people. I'm training. I'm coaching. Like, yeah, like that's when I'm, I'm in my, my element I feel. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, I would say eventually, maybe one day, but that was what, yeah. that was the first business idea I had. I was going to call it jacked and tan. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was cool. have a tanning booth in there. Uh, like all these like really nice tanning booths and people would go, uh, go work out then go tanning. And yeah, that's cool. So <laughs> I'm going to help you with that one. So if, if you're, if you're still on the pathway that we just talked about earlier, mm-hmm. then I'm going to help you with that one. So here, here's, uh, here's my statement. Hey, Greg, why don't you go buy a gym? <laughs> 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 I should. I should. So, so now all you have to do is just say yes that's yep. it now all yep. you have to do is say yes uh well listen it has been a joy having you on the program today thank you so much for for being on the pipe podcast um and before we leave let's make sure that everyone knows how they can get in touch with you if they need to talk with you if they want to contact you they want to talk with you about some of the, you know, some of the consulting, you know, services that you provide or, mm-hmm. or just, you know, tap into that brain of yours of how you've become so successful in, in your role and with the organization. Um, how do, how, what's the best way? The best way is my Instagram. Um, it's mm-hmm. Gregory A. Birch underscore. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a lot of content. I'm constantly doing content daily to, in order to help people to, and, and with, basically sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, physical fitness, that kind of stuff, everything across the sun. And, um, if, if anyone is struggling, if anyone is looking for motivation, or if you're suffering with anxiety, depression, you, you're giving into your, into your vices and your demons, and you can't seem to get out of that rut in life. 
I want you to reach out to me. I can, I, I can give you some, some help, maybe some, a little bit, of, a little kick in the ass, some motivation in order to help you in your life. Or if you're just looking for other coaching opportunities, cause I coach on sales on leadership, but then also on the physical fitness and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can discuss like what plan would be best for you to see if I can even help. And I always try to have a conversation because I think fit is everything because I may not be the person for you. And you may not be the person for me. Like I, I also want to have the right clients that I, I know I can coach and I know I can help. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about my coaching, you can go to the deltafitlife.com website. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks again. And I, I close every show this way, Greg, but uh, just keep selling and have fun doing it. Thanks for being on today. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. And thank okay. you, sir. You guys have the best day ever today. You too. You too. Bye-bye now. This is the reason why you should buy. And we're not asking the most important question, the reason why, why it was important for them, you know, in their heart of hearts. Like, that's a sale. Then we're going to see results the mindset, you know, going into every opportunity, saying to yourself, I, I would love to have the business, but I don't need the business. When they talk about building their organization just a referral, that means they're missing it. internet almost shut down because they're like are you blind do you not know what's going on out there do you not see what's happening you just yeah. did 250